Who was the first band member to quit the Beatles? Find out Sunday, the Beatles Anthology on A Beatles C. It's the television event of a lifetime. The Beatles Anthology, November 19th, only on A Beatles C. Some places are known for great music. Best Buy is one of them. Hey, just a quick one here. Kind of try and do this with no editing. And I just wanted to kind of talk about the anniversary that's actually happening this weekend. And this week, actually. It was 20 years ago this weekend. Actually, it was on my calendar Sunday, November 19th that we had the premiere of the first episode of the Beatles Anthology. And that was an exciting time for Beatle fans. It was 20 years ago, this week, the week of Thanksgiving. I remember it clearly. I still get goosebumps when I think about it. It was an exciting time to be a Beatlemaniac. And it was exciting for me because I missed out on Beatlemania. And this was the closest to Beatlemania that I could feel. There are a lot of smaller versions of it, but this was a big thing. The hype machine was going on the whole anthology project. But it was good hype. Beatlefest, summer of 95, they were talking about it, and now it was arriving. I remember clearly all day Saturday, which was November 18th, I had VH1 on all day, and they had Beatles specials all day long, as well as tiny featurettes about the anthology. And then Sunday night came, November 19th, and... The excitement that happened when I heard the screams and the pullback from Ringo's bass drum to the words Beatles Anthology, and then you see Liverpool, the town of Liverpool, the city of Liverpool, and then it dissolves into the Beatles when they're younger into the montage of In My Life. Uh, this was something that I never thought was going to happen. I'm finally hearing their story from them. And just hearing the things on the interviews, and plus hearing the earlier recordings that they did, you really get the story that these were just four kids. Four kids just wanted to get together and play rock and roll, play some music. They didn't know they were going to change the world. That's what I loved about the whole anthology thing, is that it really emphasizes that. Like John said, we were just a band who made it very, very big. That's all. But they were a damn good band. And as I watched it, I would just... <sighs> but the most exciting thing was the fact that we were going to hear the first new Beatles recordings in ages. As the story went... Yoko gave Paul some unfinished demos of John, and Paul, George, and Ringo went and, read and added things to them to make them, quote, Beatle tracks. Now, critics could keep knocking free as a bird in real love all they want to, but I'm not one that actually does that. As the end of episode one was happening, as it was wrapping up, the end credits to a live version of You Can't Do That from Australia. There was a timer in the upper right hand corner clocking down. New Beatles song in 1 minute and 30, 1 minute and 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and just like... I Oh, the, ooh, the excitement that it just gave me. I'm, I'm getting excited now when I think about the way I felt. I was, I was finally gonna hear this. And to me, it didn't disappoint when I heard Free as a Bird. It did not disappoint me at all. I didn't nitpick at it the way everybody else did afterwards, and is still doing. To me, it was a great example of, it was a great what if. And I had tears streaming down my face. I was crying. I was crying as I heard George's slide come in, hearing John's voice coming through from like the heavens. 
and hearing Paul and George singing with him and Ringo's drums. Oh, I, I was in heaven. It, it was just, it was great and it was heartbreaking at the same time. Because, boy, what could have happened? What could have been? What could have happened to have John not been killed by the man who will remain nameless? And then, of course, Tuesday, November 21st of 1995, the release of the first anthology CDs. They were two disc. For, uh, I'm sure the Beatle Maniacs on my page, the Beatars on my page know this, that, that follow my channel. Anthology 1 came out, the first of the two disc sets. I rushed from, I rushed home from work. And we had a lot of stuff to do f for Thanksgiving week, getting our house in order, but I rushed home from work. And actually my dad had to get up to, to where I was going anyway, so we just hopped in his car and I went to Best Buy for you Chicagoans on my pay, pay uh, my channel. And there's a couple of you Chicagoans on there. Harlem and Irving Plaza in Norwich, the town of Norwich went to the Best Buy, and Best Buy at the time was able to, uh, they did a lot of, um, they had a lot of great back catalog stuff. And they had the best deal going. This is my Anthology 1. I never rebought it. This is the one that I had on that day. Um, you could take a look at the little uh, crack in my jewel case up there. Uh, um, and I don't even know if I'd want to buy a remastered edition of this, because it's just, just it has the importance to me. But Best Buy had the best deal going because you got these interview discs with Best Buy. And these were no slouch things here. There's some good stuff on the on these interview discs. And immediately put this on and not only was I digging free as a bird, but I was finally hearing a legitimate version of Leave My Kitten Alone. Now the whole anthology project, people could go and nitpick about it like they have. Um, I think it was a great way of showing the Beatles with clay feet, which is one thing I like about my heroes, uh, my musical heroes. I like, I want them to be flawed. I don't want them to be perfect. I don't want them to be held up on a stained glass window. And this showed me, again, like what they were about. They were just four schoolboys who got together, who met each other, became friends, and wanted to form a band together. There was no thought in their mind of changing the world or having that major impact like they did. And the anthology kind of drove that home. And then of course Wednesday the 22nd was part two and then Thursday Thanksgiving Day the conclusion which was some of the saddest stuff I've ever heard. Paul and all of them speaking openly about the breakup, which is much different than today with the sort of rewriting of history that's going on. But Paul speaking bitterly about the way he felt they shafted him with Alan Klein. And when it ended, I just, I, I had tears in my eyes when I heard when I saw Ringo there saying it was magical. Four guys really loved each other, and I'm paraphrasing what he said, but I, I, I had tears in my eyes real tears in my eyes when he said that. And that year of 96 when Anthology 2 came out in in the spring and then Anthology 3, Beetlefest in in summer of 96 in Chicago and I'm sure in New York it was hopping too was the biggest that I remember. It was packed wall to wall people. A new generation of Beatle fans. And I remember feeling sad about another reason. My godfather, Richard, he passed away when I was about five, and he was very young. He loved the Beatles, and he also loved Elvis, too, but he really loved the Beatles. He was a McCartney guy, and I know that from his record collection. He kept on going through my mind, because he was... I got into the Beatles because I saw his records and my father's records. And they were just the coolest looking records ever. And I said to my mother, because her and my, her and my godfather, Richard, were very close. How do you think Richard would be reacting right now? And she said, oh, he would be just as excited and off the wall as you are right now. And 
I was hoping he was watching it with me. Because I would have loved to have gotten to know him further. And that would have been awesome. He and I together in a room watching this thing. So Richard, I hope you saw it <laughs> some way. But that's basically, I just wanted to touch on the anthology. This is the anniversary. I'm surprised that Apple did not do an, um, a Blu-ray release of the extended edition of the series and did come out with remastered CDs. But if you remember the anthology, I hope the excitement of the whole thing was just as exciting for you as it was and still is for me. It was a great time to be a Beatard. It was a great time to be a Beatlemaniac. It's a time that I remember and a time that I cherish. And thank you all for sticking with me. I do have a video that I need to upload on the new Maca reissues, and I'm going to be doing one on the OnePlus compilation, which, just tell you right now, all three, Tug of War, Pipes of Peace, Deluxe Editions, and OnePlus, go out and get them. I should have a new one up, hopefully by next weekend, at least of the Maca releases. So thank you all for sticking with me. Peace and much love to you all. Thank you.